Hi everyone. Today we're going to be reading a full color Captain Underpants and the pre poster highlight of the Purple Party People, which is the new book, which is the eighth epic novel, which came out the same day of Dogman for Whom the Ball Rolls, which I already did like three videos, but there's a fourth one, which is the full book. So let's get started. You can see there's 32 chapters in here. Hi everybody. As you can see, we've been experiencing some experiencing some difficult some technical difficulties. This comic book should should get you up to date on our story so far. The often told untold Story of Captain Underpants by George and Harold, by George Beard and Harold Hutchins. Once upon a time, there was two cool kids named George and Harold. We are hep to the jive. Me too. But they had a mean old principal named Mr. Krupp, who was mean. I'm all mad and stuff. So George and Harold hypnotized him with a 3D hypno ring. You will obey our every command. Okay. And they accidentally made him think he was a superhero. You are Captain Underpants. Okay. Look at me, I'm Captain Underpants. Ha 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 ha. But he escaped and ran off to fight crime. Tra la la! Rats. George and Harold ran after him. Hey, come back here! No way! Then one day he drank some super power juice. Glug, glug, glug. And now, now he has super powers and stuff. Look at me! I have. I, I got super powers and stuff. Aw, oh, man. But if you think that's bad, it gets worse. Pay attention. A ten, Chen. Wow. Because this part is important. The worst part is whenever Mr. Krupp hears somebody snap their fingers, snap, I can't snap, he turns into Captain Underpants. Tra la la! Whenever somebody splashes water on his Captain Underpants' his face, he turns back to mean old Cap Corrupt, Mr. Krupp. Blah, blah, blah. In their last adventure, George and Harold got... George and Harold got two new pets. A bardic canster named Solo. Cool! And a Petrodactyl named Crackers. Awesome! Everything was cool until a Branach named Melvin showed up. I'm telling. Melvin made a time machine out of a, a purple potty. Purple potty CO dot. It looks like this. Anyways, George and Harold wanted to use the machine, but Melvin had one rule. Don't use the machine two times to don't use the machine the the time machine two days in a row, okay? If you use if you use it two days in a row, something will happen something very bad will happen. Okay. I mean it. Don't use it in two days in a row. Okay. Seriously, don't use it in two days in a row. Okay. Then Hey, let's use this thing two days in a row. Okay. And George Harold Crackers and Solo used the time machine two days in a row and something very bad happened. What will happen next? Chapter 1, George and Harold. This is George Beard and Harold Hutchins. George is a skeleton on the right. Right uh, here. And... Harold Hutchins is on the rat, which is here. Well, I mean, look. George is the skeleton on the right with the tie and a flat top. 
Harold is the one on the left with the t-shirt and the bad haircut. Your haircut is a bone? And I never knew that. So now everybody knows that hair is a bone. Just kidding. Okay. Harold is the one on the right, wait, on the left with the t-shirt and the bad haircut. Remember that now. As you might remember from our last adventure, George and Harold had recently made a horrifying mistake trying to pass through the synthetic time wrap without letting the C2X906 Super Blim Blim Liminix tricks drive their Bebo flux, flux capacitating Zazifer cool down thus creating a sub patric padrodosical dimensionalist ultron all Nikon shift which opened up a hyper Googlipionic screen door into the sub armavating ultra zip zin zin to clear bio nans Zono, Flan, Mars, Ipan. To put in the synthetic terms, they screwed up, but they don't get, but don't get all freaked out. Because everybody looks like a skeleton, X-ray beams are normal byproduct of the interdimensional. Reality shifting. Don't worry. It'll probably clear up by the time you turn the page. See? What did... See? What did I tell you? George and Harold and their local pets suddenly found themselves wishing that they had never set foot inside that petrifying purple potty that was about to send them off on a journey in a horrifying abyss of the unknown, a journey that would probably spend impending doom for themselves and would most likely bring about the end of their salvation and we know it. But before we can, I can tell you that story, I have to tell you this story. Chapter 2, Those Wacky Grown-Ups. It's been said that adults spend their two years of children's lives trying to make them walk and talk. Say dada. You're walking and you're crawling. And the next 16 years trying to get them to sit down and shut up. It's the same way with potty training. Most adults spend their few years Few, first few years of child's life cheerfully disgusting dis, discuss, discussing P and and to learn and poopies. And how important is to is it to learn about to learn Okay. Poopies and how important it is to learn but your pee pee and your poo poo in the potty like big people do. But once children have mastered the art of toilet training and they're immediately forbidden and ever talk about poop and pee toilets and other bathroom related subjects. Bathtub, um sink and like what else uh 
Again, such things are suddenly concerned, rude and regnator, and are no longer rewarded with praise and cookies and juice boxes. Pro pee, hooray for poop, make poo, not war. That was a simple poop. And the next one, down with poop. No poop. No diarrhea in your school. Ban poo. Pee stinks. What? One day you're a superstar because you pooped in the toilet like a big boy, and the next day you're sitting in the principal's office because you said the word poopy in American history class, which, if you ask me, is the perfect place to say that word. You're probably wondering well, why adults do that. Wh why would they encourage something one day and discourage it the next. The, on, the, the only answer is that I can think that adults are totally bonkers and should probably be avoided at all times. Perhaps you're lucky and find a small handful of grown-ups whom you could tr trust, but I'm sure we could all agree that you really have to keep an eye on most adults most of the time. Which is just what George and Harold did. Chapter 3. The School of Heard Hard Knock Knock Knocks. Unfortunately, the, the adults at George and Harold School were anything but trustworthy. Take their principal, Mr. Krupp, for example. Mr. Krupp has a Mr. Krupp's wicked heart thrived on the teardrops of t children. His very soul danced thought at the thought at the thought of crushing a child's spirit and dashing his or hers hopes of dreams against the jagged rocks of never-ending despair. Each day, Mr. Krupp would stand at the doorway at his office, gleefully handing out detention slips to any child who has unfortunate enough to cross his purited path and for minor infractions too, such as smiling, breathing without permission, or smiling funny. As bad as Mr. Krupp, most of the teachers in George and Harold's school were even worse. Um, oh, wow. I am never going to that school if I find one like that. Fortunately, George and Her for George and Harold, their evil extra doors were not very intelligent intangible it where they could be outsmarted easily and they were up and they often were well guess what they're gonna say well now you might think that wasn't really so now you might think that isn't the very that what that it wasn't really sporting of George and Harold to try and outsmart dumb people. And perhaps you'd be right. But George and Harold were just trying to make the best of a bad situation. Well, if you found it, guess what it is. Push on butt to open door. Oh my gosh. And there they go laughing like crazy. Oh my gosh. You're gonna push, 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 push. Ha <laughs> ha But unfortunately for George and Harold, their bad situation was about to get much, much, much worse. Chapter 4 Purple Potty Bill. After several intense minutes of orange flashing lights, x ray beams, and lighting infused electric whirlwinds, the purple potty finally stopped shaking and sputtering and came to a sudden halt. 
thick yellow smoke poured out from the glowing hot, hot tailpipes as the grinding gear and coughing motor shifted into power down mode. George and Harold had no idea what to expect. They were supposed to be perched high up in the prehistoric tree 65 million years ago, which if you never, if you, if, which if you like dinosaurs, um, 65 million years ago is when they exist, existed, which is a nice fact. Okay, let's continue. 65 million years ago, in the Cretaceous period of Mesozoic area, wrong. But they stepped out the plastic door of the purple potty, and the boys were decided to find themselves in the middle of school library, right where they had started. What are we doing here? asked Harold. I don't know, said George. Something must have gone wrong. Harold, Harold carefully tucked crackers back into his book bag, and the two boys looked around in the brightly lit library. Well, hello, boys, said the school library. This is Band Books Week. Would you like to ex expand your minds today? Um, no thanks, said George. Hey, said Harold, didn't you get fired in our last book? I don't think so, said the librarian. Hmm, said George, I'm not feeling very good about this. Duh, not feeling good? asked Melvin. Sneedly, who had been struggling to compare to the easy to read children's bestseller, Frankfurt versus the bon Barf Bunnies from Diarrhea Land. Which also, if you can look up close, it says Evil Dave Pilkey. Which, hold on, look for a second. They took it and they added evil. <laughs> okay, never felt good. Maybe you sh maybe you should see the school nurse. We have a school nurse. Wait, we have a school nurse? Asked George. I thought we just had a box of band aids and a rusty saw. Said Harold. Yeah, of course we have a school nurse. Said Melvin. His office is right next to El Bastard. Gourmet cafeteria. George and Harold looked confused. Um, thanks, said George, but we'll be okay. Chapter 5 Strangers in Paradise Lost. As George and Harold walked down the hallway at their school, they noticed something seemed wrong. Very wrong. But they couldn't figure out what it was. Imagination is more important than knowledge. Albert Einstein. Miss Anthrope, the unvibly crabby school secretary, passed by the boys, smiled kindly. Well, hello, George and Hilde, she said. It's so good to see you two. Have a wonderful day. George and Harold looked at her suspiciously. Um, what just happened? asked Harold. I don't know, said George. I don't know, said George. But something strange is going on. George and Harold opened their locker and carefully put crackers and soul inside it. Inside. Shh. They're asleep. To their home room, George and Harold stopped by a switch of letters on the ar around the men the lunch menu sign. Today's menu: soy burgers, hot lime pie, and apple juice. As but just as they were finishing their print, but just as they were finishing. 
their principal, Mr. Crook, caught them red-handed. Red-handed. Hey, Bubs, he said. What are you kids doing out here? Wow. That is a kind face. I would like that principal. Please eat my plump, juicy boogers. Uh, um, George is staring. You see, we were, um, please eat my plum juicy boogers. Mr. Clap giggled with glee. Ha 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 ha. That's gotta be the funniest thing I've ever, I've seen all day. You boys are really clap, crack me up. You're hilarious. Then with the spring step, Mr. Crop pran pranced away, whistling a merry tune. Um, what just happened? Asked George. Shh, whispered George. Look. Shh, whispered George. Look, George pointed at two kids who were coming towards them, reading a homemade comic book. The kid on the left had a t-shirt and a flat top. And the one on the right had a tie and a bad haircut. Please feel free to remember that now, if you wish. It's, it's us. It's, it's us, whispered George. How can they be us? How can they be us, whispered Harold. I thought we were us. George and Harold hid behind a trash can as their two look at look ally, al, allies walked towards them. They stopped in front of the lunch menu sign and frowned. Then a delicious look came over their faces and quickly began ragging the letters. The strange boys snickered wickedly as they sneak away from the prank. Um, what just happened? asked George. I think I've figured it out, said George. Chapter 6. The World According to George. I think the purple, the purple potty brought us to some kind of strange backwards universe, said George. No way, said Harold. What kind of, that kind of thing only happens in poorly written child stories whose authors have clearly begun running out of ideas. Here, I'll prove it, said George. The two friends walked into the cafeteria and took a whiff. That's weird, said Harold. It doesn't smell like dirty diapers, greasy dishwater, and muddy tennis shoes in here anymore. It smells like food, said, yep, said George. The next day, boys, next, the boys went to the gymnasium. That's weird, said Harold. Our gym deep. Teacher isn't fat anymore. And he's not being incredibly cruel to the non aesthetic kids like he usually is, said George. Yep, said George. <coughs> Excuse me. Like he usually is. Yep, said George. Finally, George and Harold stepped outside. That's weird, said Harold. All our evil and most terrifying enemies have become, have tra from the past, have, have been miraculously, miraculously transformed into good guys. Yep, said George. Ew. How is that supposed to be a police? And oh my gosh, what is what is Professor Poopy Pants doing at the fire department with all these dudes? Oh my gosh, why is that? Um, why is the toilet becoming a crossing guard and helping those children? And their U.S. mail? 
Of course they live in the U.S. A. Chapter 7. Getting out of town. George and Harold ran back to their locker. Let's grab crackers and solo but and get out of here. And get out of this crazy place, said George. Good idea, said Harold. But when they opened their locker door, their two friends uh, were missing. Where the heck are crackers and solo? cried George. I don't know, said Harold. Nobody else has the combination. Nobody else except our twins, gasped George. Harold, George. Harold tried to shut their locker, but the George jammed on something. What's this? asked George. Looks like com looks like a comic book, said Harold. He held it. He held it up and read the front cover out loud. At the moment, George and Harold began to dreadful sense of horror they were up against. Chapter 8. The Preparatious Plate of Captain Blunderpants. The Preparatious Plate of Captain Blunderpants by Harold Hutchins and George Beard. Once upon a time, there lived two evil children named George and Harold. I'm bad. I'm bad as well. Really neat, actually, and they said they don't like it. Cool. Okay. They had a very nice principal who went by the name of Captain, I mean, Mr. Krupp. Hello, boys. Have a nice, have a, have a pleasant day. Whatever. One day, George and Harold hypnotized Mr. Krupp. You will obey us. Yes, master. They made him think he was an evil villain. Now you are now Captain Blunderpants. All right. George and Harold made Captain Blunderpants do all sorts of evil things. Steal a video game system. Okay. Captain Und and Captain Blunderpants obeyed. Game Station 2000. Toys crash. Steal us a big screen television. Okay, audio video. Crash! I'm so happy I could cry. Me too. Uh oh. Tissues. Grocery. I don't even know what it says. Okay. Crash! I would use those tissues too. Soon, George and Harold had the coolest tree. The world's coolest tree house. Do you boys need anything else? Yeah, how about pizza? Sure, masters. And so, pizza. Crash! Hold right there, Captain Blunderpants. Pizza. You slow stole TVs, jacuzzis, pop mad, pop machines, m massage chairs, and disco balls, but you, but you, this time you're You've gone too far. You're under arrest for Grand Thief Pizza. You gotta catch me first. Zip. And the chase was on. Soon Captain B. Blunderpants was chased into the freeway. When suddenly, oh no, hey, look out, screech, crash, yeah. A strange mixture of chocolate and peanut butter and extra cheese combined to create a super powerful chemical reaction. Sizzle, sizzle, which gave Captain Blunderpants amazing superpowers. I feel super. Sizzle, tra la la. Here's your pizza, then. Here's your pizza, boys. Hey, where's the pineapple? Fruit crash. Wow. Just think of all of all the evil things to be at the lodge. Oh, by the way, whenever Captain Blunderpants hears someone snap his fingers, snap, he turns back into Mr. Krupp. Have a swell day. And whenever Mr. Krupp gets the water on his head, H2O, he turns back into Captain Blunderpants. Grrr. Remember that now. Evil Treehouse. Comics, LLC.
Chapter 9, Not Without My Hamster and My Petrodactyl. I think our evil twins made this comic book, said Harold. They must have, said George. The artwork is really bad, and I'm pretty sure they misciplined some words. Now let's get out of there, said Her Harold. Not Without Crackers and Solo, Solo, said it, George. George and Harold ran to a window and looked out. They saw their two evil twins sneaking home, carrying their beloved pets with them. Solo and Crackers have no idea what's going on, said George. They think those two twins are us. How in the world are we going to stop it? us? asked Harold. Chapter 10, Hypno Horror. George and Harold knew exactly where those tw evil twins had taken Crackers and Solo to their same place where they would take they would take have taken them their tree house so our two heroes dashed to home as fast as they could then they climbed up the tree house ladder quietly as they could but when they peeked inside they saw something that was 389 times worse than they ever ever, ever could have imagined their evil twins were hypnotizing their beloved pets with the three e hypnoring. You will obey our every command, said Evil Harold. Yeah, said Evil George, and you'll be really wicked from now on. Two. George and Harold gasped, <gasps> which is very not smart if you are trying to go unnoticed. Hey, look out! Shouted Evil Harold. <gasps> get that! Get him! Shouted Evil George to their newly hypnotized pets. Crackers didn't move. The dazed petrodactyl shook his head and and looked a little confused. But Solo immediately sprung to action. He lunged on George and Harold and grabbed them by their shirts and yanked them to the ground. <laughs> hey! Said Evil George. Those kids just look like us. What should we do with them? We can't take any chances, said Evil Harold. Then he called Solo in a loud commanding voice. Destroy them all, wicked hamster! Chapter 11. Crackers to the rescue. Crackers did not understand what was going on, but the plucky pterodactyl knew something needed to be done. And quickly, so crack... So with a sudden whoosh and the flapping wings, Crackers swooped up and grabbed the jo George and Harold by the rental paws of their raging robotic rental rival. Oh no, screamed Harold. Crackers is going to fly high into the air and drop us. We're doomed. Actually, I think he's trying to res rescue us, but... Said George, but he got hypnotized just like Sola. Sola, said Harold, why on earth would he do the opposite of what he was ordered to do? And how come our prawns are getting exclided? Exclided, asked George. Let's not worry about that now, said Harold. We've got to get out of here. But we can't leave Solo behind, said George. Don't worry, said Harold. We'll come back for Solo. So the three friends flew back to school and headed upstairs of the library. Hey, that looks like a pterodactyl, said Mr. Crook, as our heroes pushed him past, past behind. Let me have pet him, said. Let me pet him, let me pet him. Said Mr. Krupp, cried and chased after them. Crash! George and Harold and Crackers finally reached the library and just in time to see someone and their evil twin smash into a terrible crash. Crash! And their evil. You losers won't get away from this time, said evil Her Harold. Desperately, 
George and Harold and Crackers tumbled onto the purple potty and slammed the door shut and quickly reset the controls. Mr. Krupp and Solo pounded on the door of the evil of the purple potty while George and Harold Evil's twins shook the malfunctioning time machine from side to side. All at once, the orange light started flashing, wobble v flashing, wittily, widely. The purple potty began to shake and it wobbled violently. Then the entire room lit up with an explosive bur burst of lightning and the purple potty and everyone around it disappeared into a whirlwind of electric air. Chapter 12, Kablamski. Suddenly, there was another blinding flash of light. Everyone around the purple potty flew into different directions. Then, the purple potty stopped shaking and wobbling, and the switch in and switched into a shutdown mode. George and Harold and Crackers peeked out. Look, said Harold, there aren't any books in this library. We must be back in our own la reality. We've, but we've got to be sure, said George. The two boys tucked Crackers into Harold's book bag and crept, and cre crept out into the hallway. As they peered into the windows, of the nearby classrooms. They saw room after room, room of heartbreak broken, of despondent looking children. Some were standing in corners, weeping. Others were sitting on dunts, wearing hum humlet, humiliating hats, while still others were writing unbelievably they were agreeing the sentences over and over on the chalkboard as these teacher teachers rifled through their lunch boxes stealing the best desserts. Yep, said George, we're back in our own reality. I never thought I'd say this, said Harold, but it feels good to be home. To the treehouse, cried George. Chapter 13 Purple potty, un, purple potty people unite. Seconds after George and Harold and Crackers left the library, four confused begins. Seconds after George and Harold and Crackers left the library, four confused, four confused begins from evil and on top, on top. Arch, alternate dimension begin to stir. Evil George, Evil Harold, Evil Solo, and Nice Mr. Krupp stumbled to the center of the strange empty library, rubbing their heads and looking around curiously. Look, said Evil George, this library has no book sh books on the shelves. Hmm, said Evil George. It looks like we have entered some kind of alternate universe in a logic reality where everything is backwards. Backwards, eh? said Evil George. We could do quite well in a place like this. He walked over to the drinking fountain and splashed some water on Mr. Nice Cup's face. Suddenly, Mr. Nice Mr. Cup's confused, confused, Confused smile turned into an evil frown. He ripped off his clothes and and tied a curtain from a nearby window around his neck. Then evil hit George handed him a, a bad toupee and the princess's princess principal stood before them snarling angrily through his flared nostrils. I am Captain Blunderpants, he shouted in a thunderous voice. Chapter 14, the chapter where some stuff begin. 
Meanwhile, back at the treehouse, George and Harold grab some supplies before heading off to save Solo. We need a 3D hypno ring, said George, to change Solo back to his old self again. Cool, said Harold. You gotta take the rest of the extra strength power, super power juice, just in case. Juice, just in case. Good idea, said George. The two friends stuffed their supplies and headed down where the treehouse ladder. Just where the heck do you two think you're going? Asked a commanding voice at the bottom of the ladder. It was George's dad, and he didn't seem very happy. Uh, said George, we, we need to go back to school for something. Yeah, said Harold, we forgot something. Yeah, well, we have to wait until tomorrow, said George's dad. We're having dinner with the Hutchinses tonight, remember? Oh, yeah, said George. It's Grandpa's gra grandparents' day. We almost forgot. Well, you're just in time for dinner, said George's, said George's dad. Go inside and wash up. But the, but the fate of the entire world is in our hands, cried George. The fate of the entire world can wait till tomorrow, said George's dad. Chapter 15 Super Supper After they washed their hands, the two boys went to the dining room. George's parents had prepared a big meal, and everybody waited patiently for George and Harold to join them. Harold's mom, sister, and grandpa were there all along, with George's mom, dad, and great-grandma. Hello, babies. Hello, babies, said George's grandma. What, do you have, what have you boys been up to today? Nothing, nothing, said George as he hugged his great-grandma. We made you and Grandpa a comic book yesterday, said Harold. You did, said Harold, Harold's grandpa. Well, let's have a look. George shuffled through his bag, taking things out and laying them on the table. It's here somewhere, he said. Finally, he pulled out two copies of the latest comic book, The, Ava the Adventures of Boxer Boy and Great Granny Griddle. It's about now how you guys turn into superheroes and save the world and stuff, said George. I drew the picture, said Harold. Well, that's very nice. That Well, that's very nice of you boys, said Great said George's dad. Now sit down and let's eat. We can't, said George. We've got to do, we got to go now. It's really important. George's, George and Harold's grandparents poured themselves a glass of juice and began reading the, and began reading their new comic book while the boys continued arguing with dad with george's dad chapter 16 the adventures of boxer boy and granny griddle great granny griddle an epic novella by george beard and harold hutchins the adventures of boxer boy and great granny griddle by George Beard and Harold Hutchins. Everybody knows that grandparents are a kind of dorky. They tell you dumb jokes and they tell you dumb jokes. Why did the silly Willie throw his clock in the air? He wanted to see time fly. Ha ha. Hmm hmm. And they call you embarrassing nicknames in public. Hello, babies. Ha ha. And they have no sense of what things cost. Here's a nickel. Why don't you buy video games with it? Thanks, I will. But granny, but grandparents aren't, are still cool for one reason. We're old and we don't care. 
what anyone thinks. Get out of my way, Buster Brown, shove. Step aside, you brother me, whack. Our heroes, and so. Everything was cool until one day, when a strange new store opened up downtown. Robo Jesus Inc. They were selling robots. Hey kids, ch trade your old worm out grandparents for the latest, the latest in Robo Jesus technology. Okay, cool. There, there are tons of better than there. There are tons are better than there are ton of but there are tons better than regular grandparents and they tell funny jokes what's 40 feet long and smells like pee line dancers at the old folks home ha ha and best of all they have no sense of what things cost here's ten thousand dollars for a candy bar yay soon every kid in town was trading their old grandparents hey what's going on nothing where are you taking us? Nowhere. And brand new Robo Grannies and Grandparent and Grandparchon 2000s. Wow, cool. I love my new Robo Jesus. Soon there was two real grandparents left in town. Would you wouldn't trade us in, would you? No way. You would. You better not, or you'll get a whooping. No way. Anyway, one day George and Harold, George and Harold's grandparents went downtown. Hey, something fishy is going on in there. Hmm. So they sneak inside the building. Shh. Keep out. Soon. Hey, look, evil stuff. They opened the door and saw a tragic discovery. Hey, all the grandparents in town got totally captured. Oh my. We've got to save those old folks. But how? Beats me. Hey, look! A box of old hard candies. Hmm. Let's forget those Jesus and now eat. Now, now, and just eat candy. What Jesus? Munch, munch. Meanwhile, in the next room, in a few more days, these old folks will be under our control. Cool. Then I'll give them superpowers. How will you do that? Easy. I've got a whole box of superpowered hard candies in the other room. Old people love hard candies, I know. Later. Mmm, those candies were good. I feel so strong. Me too. I feel... I feel powerful. Powerful. Oh no, those guys ate all my super hard candy. Uh oh. George and George and Harold grandpa George and Harold grandparents joined hands. Geez, their powers activate, and they spin around and, and and around. Soon they were transformed. I'm Boxer Boy. I'm Great Granny Griddle. I'm out of here. I'm with you. The bad guys ran upstairs. They got into the into the UFO on the top of their building and took off. Pshhh. Calling out Robo Jesus, attack Boxer Boy and Great Granny Griddle. Suddenly, all the Robo Jesus in town transformed. Click, 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 and all and off they flew. The Robo Jesus attacked, but Boxer Boy and Granny Griddle and Great Granny Griddle were faster than a speeding electric scooter. Zoom! More powerful than adult diapers. Bonk diapers. We am and and forget him. Wet him and forget him. And able to climb leap tall buildings without bre breaking a hip. Wee! But there's too many of them. 
I have no idea. Let them chase you for a while. So the robo chased great. Gr so the robots chased Great Granny Griddle, and Box Boxer Boy attacked the spaceship. Pow! Hey! Punch! Bam! Bang! Crap! Kick! Key! Kicky! Then he got some paint. As a finishing touch. Hey, Robo Dorks! Look! What? Hey, yummy! The Robo Jesus tried to devour the spaceship in a wild feeding, feeding frenzy. Feeding frenzy. They ate and ate and ate and ate and ate. Munch, munch, munch. And what? Then one of them bit on a fuel block. On um the fuel line. Ka boom and ka boom. We're free! Hooray for Boxer Boy and three cheers for Great Granny Griddle. Treehouse Comics Inc. Meanwhile, back at the treehouse, George and Harold will plead with George's dad and to ex be excused from dinner. A pack of evil thugs were just outside the window, sneaking up at the treehouse. Dun, 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 dun. We've got to create some kind of diversion while we unleash our sneeful sheen, said Evil Harold. The villains looked around the treehouse for anything they could use. What's this little thing? said Evil George. He pressed the button on the back of the on the back on the back of the miniature goosey grow 4000 suddenly a beam of energy shot out of the tiny current contraption accidentally zapping evil solo who was inside tucked inside evil harold's shirt pocket immediately Evil Solo came to grow bigger and bigger until he leaped out of Evil Harold's pocket and fell immediately. Evil Solo began to grow bigger and bigger until he leaped out of Evil Harold's pocket and fell to the floor with a giant stud. Evil Solo was now the size of a full-grown sheepdog. The villains were all smiled at one at another and they watched Evil Solo growl and snarl ferociously. I think we found our diversion, said Evil George. He zapped Evil Solo again. Chapter 8 Crash! Suddenly, Evil Solo grew to the sun. To the size of a giant monster, he leaped out of the treehouse and landed on George's backyard with a terrible thunderous crash. What was that? cried George's dad. Everyone jumped up and dashed outside to get a bigger look at the horrible creature that towered over the house, snarling and rolling, roar, roaring hideously. For some strange reason, reason? George and Harold's grandparents jumped up and dashed faster, faster than they had moved in years. But nobody really noticed uh, uh, the giant hamster thing. What? Uh, what's going on? cried Harold. Those evil guys must have followed us back in our own reality somehow. Whispered George. We got us. Whispered George. We've got to stop the whole them before they take over our world. So it crashed and smashed his way through the neighborhood, heading towards the big city. Because, well, that's where the giant monsters usually had. George ran inside and grabbed the 3D ignoring and the super power juice, which felt surprisingly empty, and whistled for crackers. And while the grown-ups were fussing and fretting over trap Tribal things like broken fences, insurance, policies, and property damage reports. 
George and Harold and Crackers flew off to save the world. Chapter 19 When Hamster Attack dot com Soon the three friends soared over the center of the city. They there they met up with their beloved pet Solo, who was now a giant evil monster destroying everything in his path. Well, said Harold, it looks like you are going to have to drink that super power juice so we can stop giant evil Solo from wrecking the city. Uh, said Harold. Said George. I mean, uh, Harold, said George, as he eyed the cart, as he eyed the cartoon of the super power juice suspiciously. I'm so piched, said Her said Harold. I've always wanted to have super superpowers. Uh, Harold, said George again, as he held the cartoon to his ear and shook it back back and forth. I hope I get, I hope I get Kung Fu grip and X-ray vision," said Harold. "That would be awesome." "A uh, Harold, a uh, Harold!" shouted George, as he turned the superpower juice carton upside down. "There's nothing left." "What do you mean?" cried Harold. "There was like a third of the carton in twenty, in there twenty minutes ago." Well, it's gone now, said George. It must have evaporated or something. The boys watched he helplessly as evil giant Solo continued trashing the city. Well, said George, I guess there is just one thing left to do. Hurriedly, hurriedly, the three friends flew to the house of Principal Crook. It was easy to find since that's the only house on Commitment Kurdmogendon Boulevard that was covered in toilet paper. Next time we've got to use a single play, single plea, toilet paper, said George. We'll get better coverage. After a quick knock, on the door and an even quicker snap of the finger, Mr. Crook transformed into the amazing Captain Underpants. And in no time at all, the world's greatest, baldest superhero was face to face with the world's biggest, baddest Bond Camster. Chapter 20, The Incredibly Graphic Violence Chapter Part 1 in Fliporama. So I'm gonna read this. Like you can read. Okay, in my other, in my dog man for whom the ball rolls video, we already know how to do a flipperama. So I don't really need to. But if you want, you can pause the video and read this on your own. Okay, flipperama one. So like this then. Hammock, hamster havoc. The Parama 2. Put your head on my boulder. Chapter 21. The Anticlimactic Chapter. The battle between man and man and beast was over. George and Harold petted Solo and the giant, giant face and breathed of a sigh of relief. He'll be okay, said George. He just got knocked out. Great, said Harold. It looks like all of our problems are over. Not so fast, said a voice that came from somewhere on the lower page and on the corner of the next page. It was evil George along with evil Harold and their ultra evil Captain Blunderpants. The terrible trio has been busy working on their pretentious plight, which was just as fancy as they were saying they were busy robbing the bank. Somebody's been missing with our giant. Somebody's been messing with our giant at 
attack hamster, said Evil Harold. I think we need to teach those goody goodies a lesson. And I'm just the guy to do it, said Captain Blunderpants proudly. Instantly, the mood shifted. Everyone stood back and air crackled with tension. The showdown the showdown of the century was about to begin. Captain P Underpants would soon engage the historic battle with his evil twin. Never before had our brave hero encountered an enemy who was so powerful, pound for pound. Super power, super power, for super power. Captain Underpants was pitted against his equal, his, he had met his match. It was a, it was to be an unlimited snack, smack down. An all out war, the brawl ends to, eh, the brawl to end all brawls. The event, the devet devet definite definite clash between good and evil the monumentous confirmation of the most critical snap george snapped his fingers and suddenly the horror thing you will captain blood and transformed into the friendly elementary School principal, principal. Aw, man. Aw, man. Cried evil George. Aw, man. Okay. And evil Harold. Aw, man. We read your comic book back in chapter 8 said Harold. Did you think we wouldn't remember how to turn your evil supervillain back into harmless into a harmless principal snap? George and Harold quickly found some rope and tied up evil George, evil Harold, and Mr. Nice Crap. We're taking you losers to back to your own reality where you won't bother us ever again, said George. All we have to do is dehypnotize and shrink so, and our job will be done, said Harold. Nothing can possibly go wrong now. You know you really shouldn't say things like that, said George. Why, well, said Harold. Chapter 22. Kaboom! Suddenly, lightning flashed, thunder crashed, and the rain came tumbling down. That's why, said George. As a few drops of rain hit Captain Underpants, Captain Underpants' puggy face, he began to transform in, in a matter of seconds. He changed from a confident, powerful superhero into an angry, annoying, annoyed, annoyed, Elementary school principal. Unlike wisely, the rain on the face thing was having the opposite effect on Mr. Nice Crop, transforming him once again to an argnot foil, foul, tramper, trampered supervillain named Captain Blunderpants. Evil George, Evil Harold smiled at their evil smiles at, as Captain Blunderpants snapped their ropes and yelled out a trumpet, la la la, la la tra. George and Harold quickly snapped their fingers, and again and again, but it was having no effect. It was raining too hard, and Mr. Krupp was getting annoyed. This is the dumbest dream I've ever ha had, he shouted. I'm going to go home and eh, 
and and get back into bed. And with that, he turned the storm. He turned and stormed off to his soggy toilet paper covered house. Snap, snap, snap. Looks like the tables have turned, Evil Harold snickered. You guys haven't won yet, said George. Quickly, George and Harold leaped onto Crackers' back. And the treehouse floor on friends flew toward the treehouse. Don't just stand there, you cried Evil Harold. To his creep, to his creepy cohorts. Let's get him! Chapter 23, two minutes later. Back in George's yard, our heroes searched furiously through the treehouse. I found it, cried George. The Shrinky Pig 2000. All we have to do is shrink those evil losers and we'll save the world. Too late, shouted Cap. Too late, shouted Captain Blunderpants as he grabbed George and Harold by their coll shirt collars. We'll take that shrinky thingy too. We'll take that shrinky shrinky thingy, said Evil Harold, as the contraption slipped out of George's arms. I'm not sure how it works, but once I'll, I figure it out, I can think I can think of about a million and nine evil things like to do with this. Captain Blunderpants held George and Harold high in the air and snarled vigorously. Prepare to pull the verved, he shouted. We're doomed, screamed Harold. Now wait just a pickle picking minute, young fella, shouted a familiar sounding voice inside George's house. Chapter 24 Nobody messes with our grandbabies. Harold, Harold's grandpa and George's great grandma stepped out, out onto the back pato and confirmed the big bully Captain Blood to Pants. You put those babies down or you'll get the whooping of your lifetime, said George's great grandpa grandma. Captain Blunderpants laughed heartily. Ha 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 We're not going to warn you again, Skippy said Harold's grandpa. Captain Blunderpants continued to tighten his grip on George and Harold. So the two octogenarians joined hands and gazed fiercely into each other's eyes and shouted, Jeezer power, Jeezer powers activate! Quickly, they began spinning around and around, faster and faster. The old folks twirled until a tornado formed around them, tearing away their clothes and jewelry and sending the Peto furniture flying, flying violently. Suddenly, the twirling stopped, the tornado subsided, and the electricity Two some stood proudly in their underwear, huffing, puffing, and fiercely facing their foe. Ooh, that was fun. Let's do it again, Henry, said George's great-grandma. Ha <laughs> ha, laughed Harold's great-grandpa. All right, my dear, but, but we've got to teach that silly Willie a lesson first. Oh, yeah, said George's great-grandma. That young fella's got a hankering for that spankering. Harold's grandpa grabbed a couple of curtains from the kitchen window and tied them around their necks. Not too tight, Henry, said George's great grandma. With their capes in place, George and Harold's super great grandparents approached Captain Blunderpants' temporary. Sorry, Sonny, said Harold's grandpa. Prepare to get your bucket whooped by Boxer Boy and Great Granny Grill. 
Chapter 25, The Incredibly Graphic Violence Chapter, Part 2, and Fliporama. Fliporama 3. The Jetric, the Generetic Jawbreaker. A cane in the brain. Um. Wow. How could he get his eyes punctured in the face? See, he's trying to dodge that. Ew. Fliporama 5. Take a walker on the wild side. Why are you still mad when he has a walker? He's gonna smack you in the head and you don't even know what to do. And he just, just plays the leapfrog, I guess. I guess he wants to play the leapfrog. Chapter 26. Shrinker door. Shrinky dorks. You know, said George, I think I just figured out what happened to a superpower juice. That disappeared earlier. Oh yeah, said Evil George. But you didn't figure this out. All we have to do is press one button on the shrinking, mach shrinking machine and you'll all be transformed into tiny little shrimps. Go ahead and press the button, left Harold. You're holding it backwards anyway. Really, said Evil Harold? Gee, thanks. He turned the Shrinky Piggy 2000 around and pressed the button. What do you think's going to happen? Zap! And they were shrunk to the size of potato chips. Hey, shouted Minnie Evil George. What happened? Oops, said Harold. I guess I made a mistake. You actually were holding it right the first time. My bad. You know, said George. I really know. I really, I made a mistake. You actually were holding it right the first time. My bad. You know, said George, I think I know those two boys could really use a good spanking. <gasps> chapter 27, the incredibly graphic violence chapter part 3. And flip around. Well, folks, you know what to do and how. And you know how to do it. Happy Thanksgiving! Chapter 28. Wrapping things up. Well, it looks like our job here is done, said Boxer Boy. Yep. Yes. It is my big strong man, said the great Granny Griddle, giggling gleefully. George and Harold looked at each other in horror. You know, little lady, said Boxer Boy, somewhere out there is an all-you-can-eat buffet, buffet with the sun senior... Citizens early bird special just going to waste. Let's go well, let's go find it, you big hunk of love. And said Great Granny Griddle as she kissed him passionately on the wobby neck fat. The scene that followed could be best be in the history of children book. Dentures sloshed wrinkles flap and rubby jaws squished, smoothed, and quivered generously. Um, said Harold, I think I need to go wash my eyeballs. Me too, said George. Well, I also, I also have to wash my hands because then my eyes are itchy. Whatever. And as the electric Avengers flew up into the sunset. George and Harold decided to try very, very hard to not to think about the disgusting event they just had. 
they had just witnessed. Come on, we've got to wrap this story up, said George. First, we need to dehypnotize and shrink so then we've got to go back into the crazy into that crazy purple potty to turn those bozos and their and their to their alternate universe chapter 29 to make long a long story short zap bing 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 chapter 30 to make a longer story even shorter kick Chapter 31, the chapter where nothing bad happened. Gee, that worked out pretty good, said Harold. Solo's back to normal. Solo's back to his normal size and his personality. And the Purple Potty people are back in their own reality where they won't be able to be seen. Well, they won't be able to bother us ever again. I guess everything worked out perfectly bit annoyed. Why do you have to say things like that? Things like what? Asked Harold. Asked Harold. Haven't you been a paying attention in these stories? Asked George. Every time somebody says something like that, it always means a bunch of bad stuff is going to happen. But what could possibly go wrong now? Asked Harold. Free! shouted the chief of police. You guys are under arrest for robbing Frank's bank. Looks like you're gonna go to jail for the rest of your lives. See what I mean, said George. You gotta stop state. You gotta stop saying stuff like that. I guess you're right, said Harold. But at least things can't get any worse. Ugh, shouted George. Did it again. Something even worse is gonna happen. Gotta learn to keep the mouth shut. Keep gotta remember to keep your mouth shut at the end of these books. Yeah, but what could possibly go worse than going to jail for my love? For for the rest of our lives. Chapter two Chapter thirty two Thing that the get be the be worse. Going to jail for the rest of your lives. Suddenly, out of nowhere, ball of blue lightning appeared. Grew bigger and bigger until it exploded. Blind flash and they standing up. The ball of lightning had been was smoking bare time body pants. This can't be good," said George. A small opening at the front of the robot pants uh, began to unzip and without that opening a peek from the sea, familiar face. Hey, Professor, hey, Professor Poopy Pants, shouted Harold. The cop started to leave. Stop laughing, shouted my little man, shouted the little man pecking out of the, peeking out of the dud slipper. My name is no longer Professor Poopy Pants. Change it to Tippy Tinkle Trousers. Trousers. Cops laughed even harder. <laughs> I've got a special surprise for anyone you think my new man is funny, said the furious professor. Immediately, the middle pants opened up. The top giant laser shooting rose. She rose from the from its robotic depths. Burly bursts of energy zapped her with the laughing caps. And suddenly the boat transformed into the frozen stages. My freeze beam full down to take care of anybody who stands in my way, said Tippy. And now he said with a wicked smile, It's time for my revenge. Oh no, screamed Harold. Here we go again, screamed George. The end. Don't forget to like this video. And I'll see you on my next step video. Um, and I'll give you a, a little bit like of a, like,
some stuff about what the next video will be on the book, which would be a, a Diary of the Whippy Kid book, but it's not really a Diary of the Whippy Kid book because it's uh, fine. I'll show you in the next video. Bye.